Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be watching Games That Don't Fake The Space by Jacob Geller. Listen, so um, do I, ha <laughs> I lost my hat and my second monitor just stopped working. So we're going to use one monitor. That's why you see this, obvious. And um, that's why you see this hat that I stole from my sister. Three, two, one, go. This video is better on Nebula, both because there are no ads and because okay. you can yeah. follow it up with an exclusive recording of a live talk I recently gave at my local library. Okay, shh. Now the video is starting for real. Right, what does this mean? Sometimes huge feels bigger than infinite. Oh. Let what? me explain. No Man's Sky is more or less Yo. infinite. A space game with 18 quintillion planets, okay. a number that, while not technically limitless, approaches the number of planets in our actual universe. A figure so unfathomably large that it shoots right past meaninglessness. I can no more easily conceptualize one quintillion planets than 18 or even a billion. It is so big. Bro, we can't ha we don't have 10 that are all right. We just give us 10 planets that are like curated fucking amazingly. Like, just do that. No one needs quite trillion planets that don't, don't have shit that words on them. Fail. Like, what's the point then? But allow me to present a counter example, a game that has stuck in my brain for years. What? The racing game Fuel. Developed oh by Asobo God. Studios in 2009, oh Fuel is a fairly middling Jack racing yelling. game with mediocre handling and weird opponent AI. Yeah. And yet, it's Fuel big. has a serious claim to fame. The game's map is 14,400 square kilometers, yep. or 5,500 square miles. This is obscene. I've thought about fuel for more than a decade now, oh, simply shit. because it is, of this staggering big. number. 120 clicks long, 100... I've seen let's plays of this game when it takes like basically three hours for them to finish number. one race. 120 clicks long, 120 or clicks 10. wide, thousands upon thousands of tracks to race upon in the middle. Yeah. That's... 370 times larger than Skyrim, 200 <laughs> times as large as GTA 5. It is Jesus so big Christ. that the entirety oh of a God. real scale Mount Rainier sits on the top of okay, the map the and hardly even dominates. Uh, the scale didn't get... Okay, the, when, when he compares it to something like that, it makes way more sense and it becomes way bigger immediately. Real scale Mount Rainier sits on the top of the map and hardly even dominates the space. Jesus it is as big Christ. as Connecticut or Puerto Rico. And this number still right. basically rounds Those down to zero countries. in comparison to something Maybe. like No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous. But it sure doesn't feel like zero when you can pick one direction and drive for literally hours. It doesn't feel like zero when you watch one biome gradually melt into another over the course of miles of road. Jesus. You might have recognized the name Asobo Studios from another game. They went on to develop Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, oh my God, a yes. game that literally contains a one-to-one -one scale yeah, model that of shit the is Earth, too one expensive. of the most staggering technical achievements I've ever seen. In hindsight, Fuel seems like a test run for this, a huge game created using a mix of procedural generation and satellite imagery that can, somehow, run on console and while i That's love crazy that it runs on fucking about it like length, old consoles i think this makes it's fuel insane. a stranger cultural object unlike flight simulator or no man's sky or elite dangerous you don't have access to vehicles that can cross vast distances near yeah. instantly you, you have, really a have car, to ride it. a grounded, limited <laughs> yeah. car to cover this landmass. Oh, and because your perspective and options are so limited, fuel still, to me, manages to feel big in a truly radical way. In the decade after Fuel's it's release, insane. two other racing games with similar Fu missions. Okay, Fuel is actually insane when you think about it. It's basically like the crew. But is it bigger in a truly than the radical crew? way? Is it? I doubt it.
Screw up the whole America. In the decade after Fuel's release, two other racing games with similar missions came oh, out. Please. Ubisoft's The Crew okay. and The Crew 2. Unlike Fuel, which covers an undefined portion of post-climate disaster America, The Crew makes its map explicit. It is the whole country, from <laughs> east coast yeah. to west, tip to tail. Kinda. The maps of the crew games are large, but not nearly as large as Fuel, let alone oh, the United okay. States. To adjust for this, the America of the crew looks a little like one of those draw the country from memory maps. Oh, you no. can map the oh, road no. trip of your dreams so, the, in this I've played game, the crew, but charting but the route game. from, for instance, LA to San Francisco will reveal that one is about 10 miles away from the other. Oh, uh, well. The graphics and detail are a <laughs> okay. significant that jump goes from everything. Fuel, but in a way that only highlights the artifice. You can hilariously visit many landmarks in the crew, like Mount Rushmore, which happens to be in what? Denny's parking lot. Okay. Or Mesa Verde, <laughs> That's actually insane. Maybe, or my favorite, Niagara Why Falls, does it look so... which has been made so modest for Niagara Falls or Mesa Verde. Bro, what the fuck are those rocks? Are, why does the rocks, are they always wet? What the fuck is with the plastic ass Verde. rocks? Maybe, or oh, my God. favorite, Niagara Falls, which has been made so modest you can drive over the top of it. Holy Cities shit. Cities demonstrate the same artifice in a slightly different way. Storefronts display what appear to be the average of all possible commercial writing, like this one that boasts 50% off, buy one, get second one, t-shirts, four for five dollars, 15% off. Or this bookstore with Doesn't a large banner that simply says store and smaller okay, text detailing stupid. that it is actually no details, a second-hand basically. and antiquarian electric. Or this gift shop that upon closer inspection is actually a grocery store. Or this pizza <laughs> place that has quote all flavors. <laughs> oh my god. That is so stupid. Okay, yeah, Ubisoft needs to be fair, it's you fucking The crew games, while Ubisoft. easy to make fun of, are almost certainly more mechanically satisfying than fuel. Yeah. The squashing of America down to a handful of iconic cities in the road. Yo, what the fuck is this? Oh my god, what? What? What is this? In what between, is this doctor is a genuinely interesting ingestion? idea what? to explore. Holy shit. But I still come back to fuel. Because while its cities are even less compelling than the crew and its driving kind of feels like butt, there's this indefinable power to just how big the game is. You can start driving through a dried up Grand Canyon and just keep going and, and go. And, and, you, and you're going to drive all of it. That's the problem I had with, with the, the feel. It's a big, big game and you have to drive literally all you can of it. start driving through a dry no grand travel. canyon but and just keep going that's the and point, going and going the cliff walls stretching into the horizon fuel refuses to make the landscape small in order to increase density and visual diversity simultaneously it doesn't push its procedural generation so, so far that it breaks human and visual diversity simultaneously it doesn't push like this scene alone, like look at the fucking, it's, look, look how much effort they put on the, the, to make the like city look like it's been under like constant sandstorms, under constant, like it's abandoned and has been under the constant sand. So what the fuck is wrong with Procedural generation with? so far that it breaks human imagination, creating a quintillion planets consisting of the same basic tropes. It pulls a trick far more stubborn, and yet to me, Yo! Compelling. Oh my god, that's so fucking Consisting of the same basic tropes. It pulls a trick far more stubborn, and yet to me, far more Jesus, compelling. Jesus, what a spec in this it regard to that road, man. to fake the space. Fuck. If you are anything like me, Marvel's you've probably like googled mafia. biggest video game maps at some point, and run into your own mm. personal conflict. Ellen knew I had 21k. What counts as Square. big? What's a Kilometer cheat? Square. What's a technicality? <laughs> One of the biggest ever video game maps is the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, released on MS DOS in 1996. I remember that game. Daggerfall looks like 
this. It's, it's a world map so like long. this, and is reportedly so about long. the size of that. Great Britain. And I look at that and think, oh God. Okay, sure, dude. Daggerfall has several large regions, and the landscape within those regions is entirely procedurally generated. The exceptionally patient YouTuber, How Big Is The Map, Fuck. has a video walking across Daggerfall's landmass in real time, and the first of 15 videos in the playlist is seven and a half hours. He went and did for all of uh, she did hours what of trekking across identical oh my gray mountains. God. Each generated world of Minecraft has the potential to be many, many times larger than Earth, but Minecraft is, of course, randomly and procedurally yep. generated. The fact that there's essentially no uh, authorship find, in Minecraft yeah, world find a, or find in a good like like designed like hand handwritten handwritten design one and to be fair unreal engine um unreal engine 5 is kind of making procedural generation look unique and amazing so Middle that's gonna the change Ball everything continent lessens their unreal impact the this rationalization of what feels big and what doesn't is made up and inherently imperfect Fuel uses plenty of procedural generation. No human decided on the elevation of 14,000 kilometers of terrain. <laughs> yeah. But Fuel's proc gen works in conjunction with satellite data, and the map is ironically small enough that it can still feel huge rather than Fuck. meaningless. Look at all Essentially, those drones, what I'm man. saying here is I'm working more in the realm of what emotionally registers as big rather than the raw numbers. And while I've talked about map size as a whole thus far, I've actually more often found these moments awe at the sheer size of something hidden in more traditional levels. A single instance of bigness shattering the imposed reality of the rest of the setting. Am I speaking complete gibberish right no, now as no, I'm writing you're not. this? I, I genuinely can't tell. Anyway, You're actually a lot of game development is it's creating the illusion of a holistic space and continuous progression out of several distinct pieces. I remember being mind blown many years ago watching one of these special features on God of War 2, in which they note that if a piece of level isn't visible, it simply doesn't exist. This makes sense for titles with a fixed camera like God of War, but it's not uncommon for any style of game to take what we might consider shortcuts, building environments based on what the player will see rather than real world architecture. Well, that is, I think, true for literally everything in video games. The moment you don't look at an object, it's not gonna render. As digital explorers like the YouTube channel Boundary Break often find, in even your seemingly vicinity. straightforward environments like the office of the Stanley Yo, Parable the are not as they seem. They're essentially games version of matte paintings or false fuck? building facades, ways to communicate a grander space like the office. Is this from the newest the Stanley, Stanley Parable? Parable? Because what the f I don't remember this. ...are not are as they seem. They're essentially games version of matte paintings or false building facades, ways to communicate a grander space while <laughs> still staying within the constraints yep. of budget fuck. and memory. It just changes the way you look at movies and because TV shows. Because games don't have to abide by everything. real life physics, they can have fun with this as well. Oh, the fuck. endless staircase in Mario 64 is an iconic example. Near the top of the castle, the player finds these stairs ascending into the dark and runs up them, the music continuously works its way higher and higher, the paintings rush by, and if you're 10-year-old me, you might run up these stairs for minutes before turning around and realizing you haven't moved at all. Yo, what? It's a trick as simple as it is effective. Mario is being invisibly teleported backwards almost continuously, uh, creating okay, an illusion over. of infinite ascension with only a single flight. Fuck. It's fun to think that that's, even in the early really days insane. of 3D games, developers were already. But the moment, the moment he showed it from the behind, it literally like it, it pulled the curtain. Even in the early days of 3D games, developers were so, already yeah, having fun shit. with tricks of perspective and space. But there are counterexamples to this. A oh, bigness God. that's not simply a mirage of clever Silent programming. Hill. One Two. of the best levels in Silent Hill 2, which by default makes it one of the best levels of all time, oh my God. is the Historical Society. 
a museum located off the main road, the first few minutes in the historical society are almost normal, at least by Silent Hill standards. Photographs cover the walls of the entryway, offering a bit of background on the town, and of course your old pyramid-headed friend. It is punishingly dark, and a sort of foghorn emanates from the walls, but it's not until you walk through this hole smashed in a wall that the historical society tips its hand. Beyond the hole are stairs that go down and down and down. Yo. It is minutes of walking into the black. The foghorn gets more frequent. James' footfalls repeat endlessly. And then, with no celebration, you're at the bottom. Oh. In typical fashion, there's not even a big reveal at the end, just another office room. Mario's run up the stairs. Yo, so you, fashion, you walk in minutes for nothing? End, just another office room. Is there not even, is that not even any clue, any story, any hint, anything? Room. Mario's run up the stairs is accompanied by what's called a shepherd scale, a sort of musical illusion in which a series of notes can be yeah, made. Yet you're thinking you're made moving to climb infinitely by overlapping them an octave apart. Yep. The effect is bizarre, to say the least. Click around on a 10 minute loop of the track and every bit sounds identical, but listen to it continuously and you'll swear the yep. notes are working their way up. But the tone can descend as well. As Gareth Damian Martin notes in their seminal piece, The, the Basement's Basement, basement. basement. Oh, Silent Hill 2's descent functions in much the same way as this scale. If you listen to a descending shepherd tone for any length of time, the feeling of being slowly dragged down, almost compressed, is unmistakable. It's that downward movement, the slow decay of a sound. How far can it continue, you ask Infinity, yourself? Infinity, How much deeper? Up. But the tone is steady, its slow descent both rapidly falling and yet going nowhere at all. Oh my god. That following is such the staircase, a, such James a fucking falls amazing way of into the earth, putting continuously it. choosing to jump down pits with nothing but dark at the bottom. Silent Hill relishes in the impossibility. After falling miles into the ground, you eventually emerge on the shores of a lake. The spatial absurdity is the point, rapidly falling and yet going nowhere at all. But each pit James jumps into is accompanied by a cutscene and a loading screen, two embellishments that, while necessary, remove us just slightly from the environment. True. In those jumps, a reminder of Silent Hill's gaminess returns, that the environment is constantly being built around us instead of existing all at once. The staircase is different. There is no load, no movie, to separate us from it. And, as you might have guessed from this video's topic, the stair doesn't fake it. It's all there, every step rendered in real geometry at the same time. I worked Holy with streamer crap. Rosentia to capture this footage, and his other out-of-bounds footage is more what you'd expect. Half-built architecture, streets that end in nothing, 2D planes to portray distance. But the staircase is is just there. This Exists. thing is ridiculous, he told me. Nothing else is at all close to this. And I can't get the staircase out of my head, perhaps because the out-of-bounds footage is just as nightmarish as the in-game perspective. Holy there is no crap, illusion, is. no shepherd scale. James, in this moment, is walking into the bowels of the earth in as real a way as the game allows. Fuck me. That that, that fuck hound too is just Several so unsettling, game man. Center around nothing more than this sort of transitory environment, the liminal space, if you will, of an exceptionally long journey up yeah. or down a single object. So the much. latter oh after God. the end so in Metal Gear Solid Metal Three, Gear Solid. the latter back to Yosefka's <laughs> clinic in Bloodborne, the climb up the stairs of the Shinra building in Final Fantasy VII, the elevator down into the Siafra River well in Elden Ring. Some of these are all there, as with Silent Hill 2. Some are pieced together from multiple different chunks. All are cool and memorable sequences. Indeed. But when I think about that, that new realm in Elden Ring was so fucking cool. There's only one that matches the energy Having of magical, Silent Hill. Bro. Jesus. Years ago, I talked about the indie game Naissance, an impersonal and unsettling trek through an endless, brutalist nowhere scape. 
My first encounter with the game was in the magazine Heterotopius, fittingly also penned by Gareth Damian Martin. The game's developer said in that magazine that there are no invisible walls in Nasons, and thus, no security. This speaks to how I first experienced the game. It is a Yo. challenging, frustrating experience. But on a recent revisit, I took this no invisible walls statement as more of a challenge. Enabling flying in the console command certainly breaks the game progression, but it doesn't break the world nearly as much as you might think. It just keeps going. This mechanical chasm in the architecture is modeled well above and below what the player is ever able to normally see. In this endless row of identical blocks, you can fly for what feels like miles. This dark, electrical canyon has details a player would never find. But like Silent Hill 2, That is fucking it's the menacing. Staircase, Bro, the dark so... So there is no invisible walls, meaning you can just move forward and see these huge, huge contraptions all around you. And he's using like a fly sheet to move more freely. And he, even he can't get okay, that's actually very impressive. Electrical canyon. When did this came? details a player would never find? But like Silent Hill 2. It's the big staircase that takes the cake. Towards the end of the game, you emerge from a dense ventilation network and are met with these white stairs, going up instead of down, but similarly shrouded in dark. So you start going up, and keep going up, or at least that's what you okay, assume, you. because it's so punishingly dark that you can barely see the step in front of you, and you do this for minutes oh. on end, even longer than the historical society. So long it seems they may truly never end, and then you're at the top. Like Silent Hill, the space defies all expectations. After the endless ascension, you emerge not on top of the mechanical expanse, but somehow at the bottom of a desert, Heaven. your forever climb landing you in a place that feels lower than you started. The stairs are nonsense, they're impossible, and yet they are also all really there. A thing. Enabling a wireframe outline allows us to see through the dark, but even it can't display the true scale because the stairs simply fade from view. Like Silent Hill 2's oh descent, my God. there's nothing lost by going out of bounds here. In fact, the construction is even more impressive, and even more yeah. preposterous. I've found this kind of thing more frequently Holy in indie crap. titles. The more big and expensive a game, the more often it needs to be absolutely optimized, so it can squeeze every drop of hardware power into its intended visuals. In God of War 2, by making everything you can't see non-existent, everything you can see could receive that little extra oomph. But smaller, independent Meanwhile, titles, we have Cyberpunk using body shadow meshes that is just the worst thing. Bro, it's, it's like everything flips. Not as graphically Don't do that. Taxing, or just use the mesh that you already the have in the terms of optimization. Yes, shit. Have space for all this extra stuff. Sometimes it feels like they're nothing but extra stuff. Sometimes that's the point. The game Babdi, released for free what last year on Steam and Itch.io, is a game about the extra stuff. The objectives of Babdi are as straightforward as they could be. Get a ticket for the train. Tickets are sold out, so get one from your neighbor. Leave on the train. Huh? The appeal what is instead the set this cold concrete city block that is so much larger and more vertical than the stated goals of the game require. Babdi, the name of the city as well as the game, is a brutalist playground, a place where every oh, balcony God. can be clamored over, and if you wander the underground enough, you might find people having a <laughs> trash fire jukebox dance party. What the fuck? Come on. Or At least you some might have not. movements. One of these strangely appealing things about Babdi is that as often as there's something to find, your curiosity can also take you into places that end without fanfare. The massive reservoir the city sits on is completely open, and although its corners hold no secrets, there's nothing to keep you out of it either. Eventually I found a pickaxe that allowed me to scale any wall, oh. and my reward was just that, the intrinsic pleasure of finding that yes, every building has a roof, yes, 
with enough work, I can stand upon the tallest uh, spire. Because Babdi so effectively communicates that every piece of it is real, every piece is there, oh my I never even paused to wonder if the game would get in my way of exploration. Can you jump on like the its list? entire rundown vibe, the environment of the game feels more or less lawless, that there will be no artificial impediment to wherever you want to go. It's not massive in the way many game cityscapes are massive, it's 1% of a GTA map. Yeah. But Babidi feels big because its utilitarian art style implies that every building is truly there. Nothing is a hollow facade, and nothing fancifully too. painted with the false textures the of civilization. Maybe the best way I can put it is the objectives of the game aren't indicated by the design of the environment itself. What? The city doesn't seem <gasps> built for the player to have an adventure in. So why it is was it built? Existed. And then some time later, For it to be the player stumbled in. What the fuck? The language I've been using in this video is inherently flawed. I know that. The verbiage of real or fake, illusion or genuine, trick or legitimate isn't suited to video games. A computer is making me think there's a world inside of this flat screen. The whole thing is an unbelievably complicated because illusion. Because it's a there, man. Every mesh, every texture, every texture, every every way a layer of texture was even written on the mesh is in there. Every dev had to work for that, for each piece. And then they have to connect them all. The coders had to connect all of these, every interaction, every little interaction, they have to fucking code that shit. It is the worst thing ever when you have to, when you want to mod something, mod a weapon, now you have to code 23 different objects that are going to touch that weapon. Oh, yeah, like so everything is fucking, don't even think it's, about it. I would say it's so much harder than real life. It's so much harder than real life to make a game, like seriously. So don't, don't don't just say oh, oh look the real life looks so much better bro to make that to replicate that beauty in a video game it is just the worst job ever it's very rewarding but it's so much work a magic Holy trick crap. so impressive we don't even think about it there is no staircase there is no <laughs> babdi there is no 14000 square kilometers of post apocalyptic wilderness for the purposes of this video, I've made my scales of realness completely relative. The historical society's stairs are real only when compared to Mario 64. Mm. It goes back to what I said at the beginning. But one has this is a about goal, what one doesn't. feels real, what emotionally registers as big. And in using this language so loosely, I think I've completely shot myself in the foot for the last game I want to talk about. Because the thing about and Orlando, the shining city atop the world of Dark Souls, is it's all an illusion. In lore, in the game's reality, what we are looking at is fake. The dazzling sunlight vanishes when questioned, the castle's polished halls fall into shadows, what? and it goes further, because under that illusion is another kept in a crypt far beneath the throne room. A massive statue blocks the way, only to fade with the sun or in the presence of a special ring. When it disappears, it reveals, what else? A staircase down. But the stairs aren't the notable part here. Beyond the door at the bottom lies Dark Sun Gwendolyn, one oh, of my no. favorite Souls bosses purely oh, no. for visual splendor. It is a fight <sighs> based on illusion. Gwendolyn curses you for entering and then throws the back of the hallway into the infinite, the statues on the wall repeating endlessly as they vanish into the horizon. Holy the fight fuck. is one of the rare instances where Dark Souls transcends into the environmentally surreal and accordingly, one of its most it is magnificent, battles. to be honest. Gwendolyn oh my only God. has a few attacks and no real close range ability. Instead, every yeah. time you get close, the boss teleports away, giving you time to only get in a few strikes before running again down the endless hallway. After Gwendolyn Not falls, there. the hall returns to normal. The end and its ensuing rewards are revealed to be just a few dozen yards away. Huh. On That's first blush, sick. I assumed this hall was more or less like the Mario stairway. 
After all, that's what the imagery basically that's implies. Sick. You're trapped in an No, no, it's the sick part comes from the fact that when you kill the boss, the illusion breaks. And then the stairs become finite. And then not the stairs, the hall becomes finite. Like that is that that, that switch changes everything. Run all you want and you'll never escape, but that's not true. Going out of bounds during the cutscene reveals the normal hallway swapped for this. It's a combination of clever framing and brute force yeah. of scale. The original <laughs> hall is that replaced is so with sick. a wily e. Coyote style false ending, which is then shot down the new mile of architecture the Jesus game just spawned Christ. in. And this isn't just for looks. You can, if you are both stubborn and focused enough, Take the boss fight all the way to the end of this passage. You can chase Gwendolyn until both of you are backed up against this brick wall all the Yo. way at the end. Bro. At which point, the boss AI basically breaks. There is a canon ending to this fight, in which you push Gwendolyn's endless hallway until it falls apart, and then you just stand, swinging limply at each other, incredibly far limply. from where you started. Come on. This is what's so fascinating about games, and so challenging about this language of real versus fake I've tried to build around it. Because we know it's an illusion. In the game, it's supposed to be a trick, and yet look at it! There it is, hundreds upon hundreds of statues in perfectly ordered rows. Now, funny enough, it's just one. It's just one duplicated to infinity but that doesn't change the fact that it looks cool and the fact is because it's a computer it's so much easier to just duplicate something and then remove it behind like just remove it because that is the only thing that needs to render of course the vision in front of you too but that, those meshes as or more you just real tick a box anything else and they don't the disappear Gwendolyn faked the space dark souls did not true holy fuck the other day, Not the best I booted bus, up to be fun, fuel. Honest. I told Game my computer device. to open all the countless miles of road from 2009, <laughs> and like I just started driving. It is an inherently silly thing to do, burn fake gasoline on the bluffs of a fake desert without so much as a fake objective to give but me direction. But probably the coolest but as bus ever false had. night passed into false day, passed into false night again, false I thought about False night, false scenes, day? The, the moment you describe everything you watch as false, you're basically shooting your immersion in the foot. Special effect of hundreds or thousands of real Dear actors. Colin. The illusion of an entire world built Spaces. temporarily oh, for a single scene. The trick of genuine acrobatics, false oh, explosions, God! captured once to be replayed again <laughs> and again. As I drove through the artificial walls of a canyon constructed out of digital triangles from actual satellite data, I reflected on our ability to understand something as false and true at the same time, an artistic representation that tirelessly reproduces the space it simultaneously abstracts. There is no aesthetic failing in illusion. The success or failure of a project rests on its emotional communication, no matter the strategies true. used to achieve it. But still, that is absolutely knowing true. that when I walk down those stairs in Silent Hill 2, every step really exists before me sends a wonderful little chill down my spine. Knowing that there are no hollow buildings in Babdi makes the whole tiny city more enthralling. Every game fakes its space in one way or another. But I will always love stepping outside the bounds and marveling at how the trick might be that there's simply no trick at all. That is the trick. Okay, this wasn't an intentional connection for this essay, but I recently gave a talk in a real space for the nice. very first time. Even if this talk is bad, please do not unsubscribe because... <laughs> <laughs> Last month, I was lucky enough to speak to a couple hundred people at the Durham Public Library in a talk I loosely titled, A Beginner's Guide to Game Analysis. Am I bragging a little? Sure, but I am also excited to tell you that the full recorded talk is now available on Nebula, 
both the scripted part of it and the 40 plus minutes of Q&A afterwards, featuring that, super thoughtful and interesting questions from the that's audience. That's actually fucking awesome. Nebula sponsored That she's actually video. teaching, not teaching, showing us how to microanalyze game. To be fair, I really don't want to be able to do that because like this dude, this dude went into fuel and came out with this essay about like infinite spaces, spaces that look infinite but aren't, and spaces who are advertised as infinite and are. He goes, he would go crazy in like VR games and shit. Me to do so like I'm just cool saying, like, bonus oh my this god, year. this dude's From like dedicated. From videos to whole additional essays to now hosting my recording of this live talk. It's a healthier, more sustainable streaming ecosystem that I'm proud to be a part of. It's Is a he actually checking out things in 3 Max? Healthier, more sustainable streaming ecosystem that I'm proud to be a part of. It's also, here's the thing you might not know, cheap. Follow my link in the description to get a solid eight hours of exclusive content from me and countless hours of other creators, exclusive series, movies, classes, and more for just over two bucks. Is that a month. fucking doing a talk at a local flat. library was a very specific <laughs> dream of mine, but the fact that it was, you know, local left a lot of people out. Now you too can see me walk through how I'd come up with an essay about Elden Ring, make jokes about Animorphs, and answer all sorts of great questions from an audience that y you can't see them in the video, but they are actually there. Yeah, I, I can see them. I wasn't They're just there. giving a talk in an empty room. <laughs> You're gonna have to trust oh me on this God. one. Anyway, Nebula. Watch my talk, watch a whole heap of other exclusive videos, support creators absolutely, like me. <laughs> just over when, I, when I could figure out how to access some no. of these websites, I absolutely And then go support your own local Some library. of these websites don't let us just a good sanctions, thing to do. Man, sanctions. Holy shit. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was actually fantastic. Now, the, the thing is though, wait a second. Let's go here while I watch the episode. One problem I had with one of these the, the thing is when when you make a game that uses procedure generation at the same time some games try to abuse this abuse it to the point of not making any content that actually worth worth the player's time everything's generated by you know random random AI so why? We need a mix of these. Like we need a good, good mix. I would say what a, that's a good mix. Ellering is a good mix. Yes, there are so many things in that game that are procedurally generated. Like some of the bosses, some of the bosses are just copy paste with different skins. Like seriously. So at least mini bosses, the, the main bosses are absolutely fantastic. But again, it uses it, but it uses a good mix of procedural and hand created stuff that it makes it absolutely more like such a fantastic big but fantastic and unique looking board at the same time something like super mario or um silent hill don't come nearly close to that amount because silent hill doesn't use it almost no procedural donation at least that i can tell yes sure they did for maybe the landscapes and the building oh god but it like it it didn't it didn't really use it like to make mountains and like jungles left and right it made it very minimally for certain stuff but again that game was full of handcrafted like little tits and bits here because without that that game wouldn't have worked that way it's that game is just the perfect combination of everything that it needs to be like silent hill 2 we can't really get perfect from horror than that the only thing would be like pt but again that thing that didn't have a city or anything holy shit man konami really fucked up <laughs> but yeah jacob geller is like he he goes into so much detail about so many stuff that i don't even think about on a daily basis that's why these videos are so fucking amazing because he just like he makes me think on a higher level without me needing to think on a higher level. He does it for us. 
But yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. I try to figure out where my hat is. Sorry for this girly little hand. But yeah, <laughs> see you all later.